on the floor. Appreciate oh, it. Oh, well deserved. My gosh, I was thinking actually last night. You have been on <clears throat> working on these kinds of issues um, while many of us were in. Uh, and this is not a this. You've been working on them for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and I think that is important to recognize. Uh, so. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Senate Education. It is Friday, uh, February 26. For those of you who tune in and uh, to Senate Education every day, uh, please know that next week we will not be here. So you will have to watch reruns. Uh, we are in um, town meeting week. So senators will be uh, with constituents getting caught up, et cetera. So, uh, Today we are going to start um, by uh, returning to libraries and uh, the work we've done on libraries with miscellaneous education. Uh, we are then going to move toward uh, looking at a number of different bills that <clears throat> uh, hopefully we'll be able to move today, realizing that uh, they have, it looks like multiple stops, some of them after uh, taking a look uh, more carefully. It looks like uh, every, all of them will be going to approves and it looks like one will also make, be making a visit to finance. Uh, so uh, with that, um, the only other thing I think I need to mention is that we are working hard to put the schedule together for the week uh, when we return. And uh, a few things have, uh, are already plugged in. Senator Terenzini made the good suggestion to have the Chancellor of the Vermont State Colleges come in to give us an update on their most recent vote uh, and talk a little bit about uh, steps moving forward. Uh, so that will be, that is on our calendar, I believe already. Additionally, we did receive a, a bill from Senate Agriculture today, S100, that uh, looks at um, universal school meals. Uh, I believe what I have asked uh, the chair of natural resources and energy to uh, not, we don't need to have the bill committed unless somebody would like to, but it looks like the weatherization bill may have some uh, certification programming in for people doing weatherization. So I think this committee needs to see that section of it at the very least. Um, and we also will need to get some language to uh, Senate appropriations uh, language for um, after school program or for summer programming, basically. Uh, in addition, we'll have H81 on our plates, which we will uh, have to make a decision on. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that later today. So with that, um, Mr. Unrath, great to see you. Thanks for being with us. Uh, you uh, wrote to us and Senator uh, Chinden was kind enough to remind us of your email. Uh, and so uh, welcome to Senate Education. And we're talking about what is now the miscellaneous education bill. In that miscellaneous education bill, we are looking at uh, a working group on the status of libraries in Vermont. So with that, the floor is yours and look forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you, Chairperson. And thanks senators for um, paying some attention to this bill. I appreciate it. I do understand that uh, our uh, state librarian Jason Broughton spoke with you all yesterday about uh, moving the language forward as it was. And if that's Jason's opinion after having reviewed um, what I sent along, then I fully support what Jason has, has decided. Um, I think that uh, he has a good overview of what's going on in the state and I wouldn't want to contradict his perspective. Um, I did feel it was important to point out the work that the Green Mountain Library Consortium has done in terms of bringing libraries together because they've done things like bring ebooks to the state of Vermont. They've uh, brought a shared catalog that 100 libraries use. Uh, they've brought a courier service and now the state runs. So there has been some work on the ground by volunteer librarians to do some networking together with our resources. All of this has been organic and from the ground up. And so that's why I wanted to send that on because I think it's really important that we do work with them and touch base. But as far as the language of um, what was in S26, I am perfectly okay with going forward with it as it is. Um, and I think that uh, the important thing 
for me as the president of the Vermont Library Association and also as the director of the library in Shelburne is for you to know that librarians fully support this bill. Uh, we think it's great to shine a light on the work we're doing and I fully support the bill. And I think that uh, in whatever form it ends up in, it will be a, a wonderful thing to be able to see the work that we're doing. And I had just a couple of reminders, if I could take another minute. Please. Um, one is that libraries are the most visited cultural institution uh, out of uh, more than 10, according to a recent Gallup study. So people come to libraries more than they go to the movies, more than they go to sporting events, more than they go to any other cultural activity. People use libraries. Uh, last year, we had 5 million visits, and we checked out more than 5 million items at all of our school and academic and public libraries. So we are a heavily used institution. And then my other point is that libraries were green before it was cool. So you hear about the sharing of economy, but we've been sharing our space, sharing our resources, and sharing our expertise for going on 200 years now um, in terms of public libraries. It's something we've always done and the rest of uh, the world has kind of caught up to that idea. Uh, so I think it's, um, it's important to recognize that libraries are on the forefront of that sort of shared resources and are actually um, a highly green and environmentally friendly organization. So those are just a couple of points I wanted to add to the um, testimony that I already heard um, given. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions or let you get on to your business that you have at hand. Thank you, Ms. Unruh. Uh, that's very helpful. Appreciate the reminder of what, um, how incredibly important uh, libraries are to the landscape and to the people of Vermont. Uh, also appreciate your support of the bill. Please do know that, uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, as it makes its way through the process, uh, the House, if, if you do have a change of heart in any way, uh, the House uh, can certainly uh, listen to those uh, concerns, questions, and make any necessary amendments. Um, so that's something else just to keep in mind, but we appreciate all of your work and we appreciate you being with us today. Uh, committee, any questions? Just okay. seeing uh, I, had, I had a question. Oh, I'm sorry, Senator Hooker, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Unrath, for your work. And I'm just curious, do you have 15 members of your consortium and is this all volunteer, voluntary um, membership? Um, you talked about connecting 100 libraries. And so how does, how does your consortium work and connect with um, the- So the, the Green Mountain Library Consortium has um, over 100 members and it's a purchasing consortium first and foremost. So we pool money that's locally raised money from our municipalities or our institutional libraries. And then we buy things like a shared catalog or eBooks or pay into a courier service. They do have an executive board and then they have membership meetings, um, but overall it's a way to, to pool our resources and um, be a lot more efficient in terms of what we're spending. Uh, and the state also does this with some of the uh, money that comes either from taxes or from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Uh, but this is an all volunteer organization that sort of came up organically when we realized a dozen years ago that we needed to start offering ebooks uh, to people in Vermont. Okay, so. and I had seen the number 15 on your website, and it must have been the members, the board members or something that I was looking at. Oh, Thank yeah, it's, it's over 100 libraries, and it serves um, roughly two thirds of all Vermonters are served by one of those um, things that the Green Mountain Library Consortium provides. Okay, thank you. Great. Okay, well, thank you, Mr. Unrath. Uh, very much appreciate you taking the time and uh, Look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Demaray, good afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon, I'm fine. Good. Uh, would you be so kind as to take us through the miscellaneous uh, Ed Bill as we have it? Um, be a big help. Yep, and, certainly. Uh, and I think my only, uh, yeah, I think that's it. So um, if senators have it, 
Okay. Uh, posted. I, I've got I've got right here. I just want okay. to make sure because right one. And I don't know if there have been any. Oh, it's only draft one point two. So the only change was related to uh, health and some uh, another little language change. Um, but if you would just give us a broad overview and then highlight those couple of changes, I know senators have seen this. Uh, language quite a bit. Okay. It's coming up in one minute. Um, shift it up there. Okay, it's right here. Okay. Okay. So, uh, can people see this a little bit bigger? Maybe a little bit bigger. I have mine in front of me, but um, that's perfect for me. Okay. 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 So for the record, uh, Jim Damaray, uh, we're walking through your miscellaneous ed education bill. It does three things. Uh, deals with the libraries, um, addresses the, um, uh, the coastal liaisons and it addresses the menstrual uh, products and wellness policy. So the first part of this is libraries, and this is unchanged since the bill was introduced. So I won't walk through this, but it's the same as you've seen before. It goes on quite a ways. That's the same here, all oh, library. Okay, then we get into the uh, coastal liaisons, and this is the same as you, you saw before, uh, no changes here, so we're adding this new um, permission, if you will, for towns and school districts to jointly fund uh, coastal liaisons. And then wellness program, um, so we've been through this recently. Um, I did change this definition. Uh, Senator Hooker was very uh, perceptive and noticed that the definition of comprehensive health um, already includes nutrition. So no reason to repeat that word. So I've taken out, taken out that word. Uh, and going on to menstrual products, we just changed the the um, term, uh, we got rid of hygiene. So wherever you see this, I haven't highlighted them everywhere, but everywhere it's been changed to menstrual products. And that is it. Okay, okay. so uh, that was my question. So you've changed it from um, um, hygiene products to menstrual products throughout. Correct, yeah. Oh, good, thank you. Senator Hooker. So um, with, and relative to that, today we passed a, a bill that would um, exempt <clears throat> feminine hygiene products from tax taxes. Um, are these terms used interchangeably? And are we going to, we're not gonna run into any trouble by using menstrual products in this bill and feminine hygiene products in the other because we were tied to a, uh, a group that oversees the taxing of those types of products? I, I, don't, I don't think so uh, because it's not tied to um, the tax Taxing. policy itself. Okay. Jim? And I'm, just, I'm curious to know if the terms are used interchangeably. In statute? In, in, well, yeah. Yeah, clearly, right. <laughs> well, I'm not sure. So uh, I'm not sure. I haven't worked in the tax bill, but do you know where they, they define the term feminine hygiene products? Um, I didn't see that in the bill, but let me just see. It's not defined in the bill. It's, and it's right. the only reason it's there is and has to stay there is that's the way it uh, is 
that's the terminology in the compact in the streamlined tax yeah in the agreement. in the streamlined tax, tax i call it a compact <clears throat> i you know this is this is internal to the to the to schools and okay i'm just joking yeah uh, no i get your question i think it's a good question the only question would be for jim is when the tax and when these are tax exempt products, will it include menstrual products in the same way it would feminine hygiene products? That would be a question, I think, for the tax attorney yeah. um, more than me. Well, maybe we could just say that menstrual high uh, menstrual products um, will. We we put a little definition in there. I don't want to put the word tax in there. Then it goes. Yeah, to this will be going to finance <laughs> uh, if it's any comfort. Oh, okay. It will. It yeah. needs to go to finance uh, because yeah. of the uh, relationship between the. Uh, um, at least when I was in finance, we would see things as it relates to the cultural liaisons and uh, <clears throat> you know sharing uh, you know what we're trying to do there. <laughs> so they will have an opportunity to eye this as will appropriations. Okay. We do have That's time. Right. And even we, Senator Hooker, for what it's worth, even we, I suspect, would have a significant amount of time. I don't think this will see the floor until late March. Oh, okay. Only because it has at least two other stops. Okay. All right. Just, you know, don't want to run into trouble later on finding out Absolutely. that we the wrong terminology. And I don't, I, I don't want to see hygiene. <laughs> right. No, I, I agree. So if, for example, as we explore and other committees explore it, I think um, we can always amend it accordingly. Uh, Jim, do you mind taking the screen down just so I sure, can? Yeah, of course. Other questions for Mr. Demaray? Uh, Senator Persley. I was just going to say that I don't think we need to worry about the connection to the tax because I think all schools are nonprofits, so at least the ones we have in Vermont. So they're oh. not going to be taxed anyway. So a great point. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? If not, I would welcome a motion to move the miscellaneous education bill. Senator Lyons moves. Makes um, I will. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. No, I move that we pa that we um, vote on and send the miscellaneous education bill as amended to the full Senate. We don't need a second in the in the committee, do we? I don't think so. No. Okay. Is there a draft? Is there a draft that we should be identifying, Jim? Uh, draft yes. one point two. Yeah. yeah. So draft one point two of the miscellaneous education bill. To the full Senate. Uh, Senator Chinden. Well, I'd be glad to second if needed, but I have a question. So we're going to the full Senate and not to the Finance Committee. That's how it works. Uh, what will happen is similar to today, it will be introduced on the floor, uh, similar to what happened with the agriculture bill, and then it will be sent automatically to appropriations because there's an appropriation in there. And then from there, it'll go to finance or vice versa. There's nothing we need to do, though. We don't need to send it. Uh, that's what. Uh, and just for, so you know, Senator uh, Secretary Bloomer will take a look at this and he'll direct it accordingly. Great question. Uh, any other questions, comments, discussion? If not, uh, Senator Perchlick, uh, would you call the roll? Yes. Senator Chittenden. Aye. Senator Hooker. Yes. Senator Lyons. Yes. Senator Terenzini. Yes. Senator Perkslick votes yes. And the chair, Senator Campion? Uh, yes. So 600, is there someone who's interested in reporting the bill? If you, you would, Senator Hooker? You're muted, but if Senator Chittenden didn't want to do it, <laughs> we talked a little bit about this. I thought yes, there's well. always the possibility, also of I know Senate Ed last year shared some bills. I think where people, you know, one person started, the other uh, 
continued if that's something you'd like to do. I think it'd be great for Senator Chittenden to get his feet wet. I think, yeah, if, if Senator Chittenden is uh, comfortable with it to, to report the bill. Um, and uh, just so you know, I am happy to, uh, to work with you as much as you'd like uh, to write a floor report as I know uh, Jim is happy to give you any pointers as well. Um, yes, please. Always happy. It's not a matter of wanting. I just want it to pass. So if uh, that would be better done with somebody else, happy to yield. But my question is, do I report? Would this be reported right away, or does it go to finance first and then come back and be reported? I don't get it. It's a great question. Um, so it'll go to appropriations and finance, and then it'll end up on the floor. So what you'll end up doing is, uh, either of those committees may amend this bill uh, or may not, uh, and you will probably be. Uh, in a couple of weeks, it'll be brought up uh, on the floor after both of those committees have seen it. Knowing that appropriations and finance have an extra week to look at these kinds of things, um, you might not have to report it for uh, two to three weeks, but I would just recommend uh, spending a little time over town meeting week, just kind of gearing up and, and I'll also start to, to type up some things and, and send them your way to be helpful. Senator Hooker. And I just want you to know, Senator Chittenden, that I volunteered because I think this is a great bill. And I think that you're going to have a fun time reporting it. Yeah, sure. No, it's, it is a great bill. <laughs> we all want we all want to do this bill. Right. Don't, we all want to yeah, do this bill. All so so count that, yourself that, lucky, yeah, Senator Yeah, Chittenden. you be. Uh, OK, thank you, Senator Chittenden. So uh, Mr. Demaray and for Jeannie, what do you need from Senator Chittenden at this point? I, um, well, I, I need to um, strip off the highlighting in this bill. Yep. Um, so when I have a break, uh, I'll do that and send that back to Jeannie for processing. Great. And then Jeannie, what will you need? Um, the process is I have to send the record of action to the, the clerk. Uh, who will confirm the vote, the accuracy of the vote as I've tallied it. The, Senator Perchik will send me back, send me an email confirming the accuracy of the vote as I tallied it. Then I send it to places. Um, the, uh, the reporter will email John Bloomer and Vanessa Davidson with the final version of the bill and the vote. Um, but I can talk to Senator uh, Ch Chittenden about that later. That'd be great. Okay. Terrific. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, School Discipline Advisory Council, uh, which also will have a stop in appropriations. Um, I do not think it will go to judiciary, um, but it will go to approps for certain. Um, we're looking at draft 4.1. And uh, Mr. Demaray, if you wouldn't mind taking us through it. Uh, we worked on this uh, in fact, perhaps close to finalizing things. Um, let's have a look. Okay. So let me get the bigger, if I can. Oh, too big. Okay. Uh, so again, for the record, uh, Jim Damaray, uh, Legislative Council, we're walking through S16, which is the act uh, creating the School Discipline Advisory Council. There are not too many changes here. Um, so let's just go through and see what changed. Okay, first of all, this isn't changed, but before you pass this out of committee, this bracket uh needs to come out so i'm not sure what to do about that that's the fifteen thousand is for the per diem reimbursement and there was an open question as to whether the task force or a we need additional 
funding to carry out the duties of the task force. So that's a unresolved point. So, Senator Campion, can I ask a question? A absolutely, Senator Terenzini. Uh, thanks, and I, I apologize for personal reasons. I had to miss a committee meeting or two this week, and I'm sure you guys covered it. Uh, but uh, that fifteen thousand dollars, I noticed that's is that fifteen thousand dollars total for the committee members to draw down from? That's not fifteen thousand dollars per committee member, right? No, that's uh, the total amount. I think you've got twenty uh, members of the committee. And basically, it's a charge of, um, and you have, uh, I think it's eight, eight meetings. I can't remember, but it's, it's just math. So it's 20, 20 members times 125, $125 per meeting. Okay. So, uh, okay. Times number of meetings. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, the, the commissioners would get paid a $125 a meeting. It's not $15,000 stipend per commissioner. Yeah, correct. They won't get paid 125. They'll be paid per DM, I think, of 50. And the rest is for reimbursement for travel. Um, so, okay. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, good question. Uh, Jim, would you say a little bit more about what exactly uh, are you feeling is, uh, you mentioned um, something we still need to determine. Uh, well, this, the out. preparation is only for this, but if we go down to line six. Yep. Um, and for expenses incurred by the task force in carrying out, out its duties. Go so back up to its duties. It's got a lot of data to deal with. Um, so it's analyzing. Uh, okay, so dues are here. So reviewing various things and then um, you come on to analyze data. Um, and uh, so here's all the data they have to analyze right here. Um, and then, yeah, so it's really the data part of the job where they need some support for that. I guess the um, AOE will be uh, preparing the data for them. Uh, that's covered. So here you have Secretary getting all the data together for them for these years. So for what, um, 13 to 19 for six years approximately. Uh, so it's not as if they have to collect it, but they have to analyze it. And the open point here was, do they need some further resources to help them with that? I assume the agency will help them anyway with that. So maybe, maybe not, but I'm, I'm not sure. Um, so you're saying that an outstanding question in your mind is whether or not the agency is going to assist them with this data collection. They will, no, they will assist with the collection. Yes. Right here. It, it's all the, the work done to analyze the data. Uh, this will be a lot of it to analyze and do they right. need help in that process? Okay. Can you say a little bit more because this is, uh, what your concern is exactly. So that they might not have the staff, that they might not have, they might have to hire outside of the agency. I, I don't really have a concern. I, okay. I'm just noticing that the draft has had this language in it for a long time uh, about expenses incurred for carrying out duties, but it's never been defined as to what they actually need for that or if they need that at all. I see. Um, okay, then it sounds like we should, it sounds like you're recommending that we hear from the agency on this language. Oh, I, you, you have a choice, right? I mean, you could just take it out for now and it could get picked up later in the process. Uh, uh, it's very stops along the way. Um, you could, you could wait to hear from the agency. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I would prefer to, to wait to hear from the agency, um, but uh, again, this doesn't have to, uh, Senator Perslick, did you have a comment? Um, yeah, thank you. I was 
the, the way I read it before was that if there's basically, if there's any of the $15,000 left over after paying the per diems and expenses to the commissioners, that the, the task force slash the agency would be able to use some for any other expenses. But I, I don't know what those expenses actually would be, would be incurred by the task force. So I'm okay with, with taking it out or, or waiting to hear if AOE was thinking that they were gonna somehow, that 15,000 in brackets might change based on expenses incurred by the task force that were beyond per diems and travel mileage. I think you're right that there will be room in the 15,000 given the fact that we're working remotely. Um, so a part of that might won't be spent and could be used for other things. Yeah. But Jim, our, I'm sorry, go ahead. Senator Perchlick, did you want to finish? Sorry, yeah, I, can see, I, I was just gonna say, that's been my experience on these, that a lot of them don't, a lot of people don't take it. So you need to put the maximum amount in there, but people that are getting paid to be there can't take the per diems. And a lot of people don't bother with it, filling out the paperwork. So you, they're usually in my left over. But if, if it's a question of analyzing the data, like I have no idea how much it costs to have data analyzed. Who does the analyzing? Who's responsible for paying for that? Yeah, it, it, I'm, I'm, you're asking me? I, I, I'm Actually, asking what I, I think would be good, since Mr. Demare is raising these, this for the first time, I think, why don't we start from the beginning, Jim? Why don't you take everybody through the bill? Uh, it'll be a good refresher for everybody, uh, also for Senator Terenzini, and let's not bounce around too much. So let's just go through the whole thing as a, as a good review. This is uh, an important um, step if we take it. So we've got the task force being created in um, subsection A, uh, working with the agency uh, to make recommendations to end suspensions and expulsions for all but the most serious student behaviors um, and collect and analyze data. Um, um, so remember this is a combination of the Racial Equity Task Force recommendation, which is the part here about um, making recommendations to, to end suspensions and expulsions for all the most serious student behaviors. And then you have uh, Sarah Sears' language um, that he had proposed about analyzing data. So that's what this part is here. There's like two main focuses of attention. Okay, so just hold on, Jim. Let's take our time here. So again, we have the task force. Why don't you bring us through the membership? Yep, membership is uh, up to 20, not more than 20 members, appointed by the secretary, uh, who shall be Vermont residents, and the balanced representation of educators, administrators, high school students, special educators, parents of students, school board members, and members of community groups. Right, uh, men uh, membership diversity. Yep. Um, yep. So we'll see to have Question. a racially diverse membership Question. and include. Yeah. Senator Lyons. Do we ever talk about having someone um, from the Department of Health on this? I'm just as we're mm -hmm. looking at this and we're talking about student behaviors and um, issues related to um, what's going on mm -hmm. with kids. The youth risk behavior survey is something that might be helpful. So maybe it's not a person, but maybe it's a access to um, at some point in here, maybe I'm jumping ahead then to information that might be available on uh, youth risk behaviors because the Department of Health has that information based on school year, based on age and, and also school. So I'm, I'm thinking out loud, but I think um, that might be a neat link to put in just in case it doesn't happen organically. To make sure that uh, the committee itself uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. Access is that youth risk behavior survey. Yes. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. okay. So, so powers and duties again. Um, working with the agency uh, to make recommendations and suspensions, etc. Uh, and then following specific tasks. So um, the first four are from the Equity Racial Task Force recommendations, uh, reviewing in, in, in school services and availability of, of these services um, that are available to support students who otherwise face exclusionary discipline. Uh, recommend uh, additional or more uniform in-school services that should be available to, to, to students who are under eight and all other students. Uh, three, define the most serious behaviors that, after considering all other alternatives and supports, should remain eligible for suspension or expulsion. And four, identify best practices practice of procedures that minimize law enforcement contacts. Jim, just and so then from know, five on, this is this is Jim, the if you could speak a little bit closer to the mic, you're in and out quite a bit. Yep. I'm sorry. Turn away. Okay. So is that better? Much better, thanks. Okay. Um, so five on are the ones uh, from Center Sears. So analyze on a school district and improve independent school basis, the available da data and data collection processes regarding suspensions and expulsions, and identify, collect, and analyze additional data necessary to inform the work of the task force, including the total number of instances of expulsions and suspensions in each grade operated by the district or approved independent school, the total number of students in each grade operated by the district or approved in school were expelled or suspended, and the number of instances of expulsion or suspension or both for each student, the duration of each instance of expulsion and suspension, the infraction for which each expulsion and suspension was imposed, um, and e, each, each instance of referral to local law enforcement authorities or the juvenile, juvenile justice system. Uh, and then recommend changes to the types of data they collected and the data collection processes regarding suspensions and expulsions as necessary for the collection of all appropriate data related to school discipline and review how other states address exclusionary discipline. Uh, the report's due uh, this year in November uh, to you. Um, and uh, I'll be shared with uh, my educators, et cetera. Um, uh, the secretary calls to being by August 1st, um, not more than six times, has the assistance of the AOE. So um, back to this question about what support they need, it might be the agency has enough resources to help them through this process. Um, I don't know. Um, and then compensation reimbursement is just standard language. Um, and here comes the appropriation. So when we're talking about line six, uh, carrying out his duties, it, it's duties will be to analyze all that data coming in and that data will be coming in from the secretary. So secretary here will collect and distribute to the members all this data. Uh, for six years worth of, of, of six years worth of data. Um, that's it. Questions, Senator Lyons. Yeah, so the concern that Jim was expressing earlier is probably a, a legitimate concern. So we have all the data, we're getting a report. Um, and we're, are we at, are, do we ask for recommendations later on? I think we talked about this a little bit. We do ask for recommendations. Yeah. yeah okay. I thought we had, okay. I'm, I'm good for now. Okay. 
I mean, you could just increase the appropriation by 5,000 bucks or something just to help cover expenses. Um, and if it's not used, it'll be reverted back. I mean, you know, I, I think approps is going to be the ones that really are going to be digging into this, that piece, Senator Perslick. Still a question on a different part. Yeah, go ahead. Um, when, in the make uh, two two questions. One is on the makeup of the committee. Number two, line nineteen. It says administrators. Do we want to be more specific? I mean, administrators could be pretty broad. I wondered if we'd rather say superintendents or something, or principals. Or principals. I mean, we have yeah. School administrators, does that go without saying that it's a school? No, that, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, I mean, I guess for me, I like school administrators because it could be dean of students. Some schools will have a dean of students. Some would have a um, uh, director of something else. Um, how do people feel about school administrator? Senator Pershing, do you feel that specific enough? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. And my other... My question, comment is on the power and duties and then the next page line yep. nine, where it says the task force shall in conjunction with the agency of education. It does seem like, yeah, that, that we're setting up the task force to be its own entity. It can't really spend money or anything. So, you know, kind of does a question about whether if we gave them money, how, that, how they'd spend it. They, they don't, they wouldn't really be able to spend it because they're not a real entity. So, since they're since the agency is is staffing them basically, I don't know what, if they had expenses, they would just it would be part of their budget. We wouldn't need to put it in here, I guess, unless they say that that was required. Um, I just that it struck me as a little interesting that their task force is going to do it in conjunction with the agency, but the agency secretary is a member of the task force. I didn't know where that if, if anybody else. Thought that was a strange the way that's worded. Say a little bit more in terms of uh, well, it's the task force issuing the report, but yeah, the, but its recommendations is in conjunction with the agency. I guess are every is everything underneath that line where it says the task force shall in conjunction with the agency of education, and then it has a sentence and then a whole bunch of numbered points. Is everything after that? being in conjunction. And when you do it in conjunction, does that mean they they each kind of like vote or? It just seems like other times, it's just the task force shall do these things. Um, but here we say the task force shall do things and they have to do it in conjunction with the agency. And I'm just not sure what in conjunction means. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a good point. I, you know, for me, I guess the way I'm thinking about it is given some of the complexity of it and you know you put this group together I would I feel like they would need that sort of agency support uh, if that makes sense you know you've got a couple you know you have two teachers you have two admin, school administrators you have students um, and I don't know if this is what you're getting at but uh, I feel like without the agency it would be hard to do uh, this kind of work. And so in conjunction, but in conjunction, you know, what that definition is, um, I guess I look to uh, Mr. Demaray on that, when you use well, that in conjunction with the agency. I mean, I don't, I don't think you knew this here. I, I can uh, we're, we're losing you, Jim. Uh, often you don't do, sorry. Um, I don't think you need to have this language about in conjunction with, um, because the agency is going to give support to the task force in any case, and the secretary is on the task force. So this language probably got picked up from um, other task force, la other language, but I don't see why it has to be here. S Senator Perslick, are you concerned that there might be, uh, that the task force might not have a level of independence that it needs if it has the agency involved? Is that at all concerning? Um, I guess it could be something like that because I, I think that the support is there because down below we say they'll, they shall have the administrative support. Yeah. But it's, 
I just didn't know what it mean. I think if everybody is in agreement, it'll be fine and nobody will, it'll never come up. But if, if the task force members want to make recommendations that the agency doesn't like, yeah, could they then say, hey, we got to do this in conjunction. So it's a good point. Yeah, go ahead. I, I just didn't know what it meant. So I thought we should just make sure, sure. we're saying what we mean or meaning what we say. Yeah. Now, I, I think it's, it's a good point. If they were to bring forward certain policies and the agency, you know, doesn't want them, does the agency then sort of trump that, those recommendations? Should it be, I mean, in other, I'm just trying to think to other, we talked a little bit about this with literacy also, in other creations of these kinds of task forces and things, do they usually have a level of independence from other agencies? Yeah, like right now I'm on the after school task force. Yeah. We have the support, AOE is doing a lot of the work, but we don't, we're not issuing a report in conjunction with agency of education, we're just is, issuing a report of the task force. Yeah, and as I think of, you know, the. Act 250, that the 50 year thing, it was similar. There was that independence from the Agency of Natural Resources. They were there to support us, but it was the task force that, if you will, the, the group that um, that issued the report. Senator Hooker. That make the recommendations. That I make mean, the recommendations. What's the purpose of the task force if it isn't to be independent and make recommendations, I guess? Yeah, 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 exactly. And I'm still, um, and as far as support from the agency, I guess I'll go back to the analyzing the data. And maybe that's where the support from the agency comes in. The task force hands over the data. The data is analyzed. Um, I, I don't know if that, you know, is that kosher? I don't, I don't know if that's the way it it's done, but it, se it just seems to me when we talk about analyzing data and we're looking for, you know, people to do it and time spent on it, there's going to be some cost incurred there. So we're, who's going to pick up that tab? Yeah, Senator Persley. On that, on that point, Analyze could mean very different things. I mean, there's very complicated analysis, but then there's also just tallying up the numbers. That's analysis. You could just say, okay, this, you know, the, like the, the numbers underneath there, just say, you're just like telling us what the numbers are. So the analysis could be like taking all the data and putting it into a table, or it could be kind of running it through a model or something. So. Yeah. It could be also that we're not looking to have it analyzed, but just shared. Yeah, I don't know if analyze is the right word or not. Right, more more like you know, brought to light, focused on. What yeah. We, so that we know what we're talking about, because otherwise it, it just, you know, we talk about this expulsions being a pipeline to yep. corrections. I mean, is that the type of analysis we want? Do we want to see how many how many kids end up? Right. How, how far does this task force, how far does the charge for this task force go? Yeah, you know, it's a really good point. I'm glad we're talking about it. I was thinking a little bit about it last night, just looking at the makeup of the task force to, to analyze what is what exactly do we mean? I am more inclined to collect the data and share the data. I mean, a lot of research has already been done out there. Data has been analyzed across the United States that shows, you know, the trends that we're trying to stop. So I, I think, uh, I don't know how others feel, but maybe it is reporting the data. And, and I just don't see it, this task force sitting around within six meetings to analyze data. And then if we use the word analyze, analyze to what end? Senator Lyons. Maybe we're gonna ask them to offer suggestions about how the data might be uh, analyzed and used uh, in, a, in a next step. So this, this is a group, as you said, that 
first of all, they don't have the resources to do all the work that's needed. Yeah. I'm thinking this could be a Herculean task, but yeah. maybe there they would have some thoughts about identifying uh, next steps to analyze the data uh, for uh, to help develop appropriate statewide local policies. So, I mean, well, something like that. They're yeah. At- so- so we have them submitting a, a written report and with the findings, which is basically yeah. the data and addressing um, and, and coming up with legislative act, legislative idea or legis- possible recommendations right. for legislative action. So that kind of feels good to me, Senator Hooker. And, and maybe it's just a question of the frequency, you know, how often is this happening and comparing it to data that's already been collected uh, and and analyzed and you know where where do we want to go from there you know this is the frequency of of these um, actions within our school systems yeah how you know according to different um, either benchmarks or or groups and then what do we do with that yeah and I'm inclined to think that that's even too much for a group that's meeting six times to do. I think what we do is, as we have, submit a report, which is, you know, submit the data that's collected. Um, and suggest next steps. And suggest the recommendations for legislative action. I mean, that's really, otherwise, I don't know how we get anywhere. I mean, we'll take that data and we'll take their suggestions. They're going to come back to both committees um, in the House and Senate and, and re- report this information. And that's going to be knowledge and, and helpful for all of us to know. Senator Persley. Yeah, and with what you said there and thinking about it, I think if we just say compile instead of analyze, I mean, they oh, can I still think. analyze it on their own to meet the other sure. things we're asking them to. But if we say compile, well, in the two instances that analyzes in that paragraph, change to compile, that works for me. Yeah, that makes me feel much more comfortable as well. Senator Lyons? Sounds good to me. Okay, Senator Hooker. Mm-hmm. Uh, just going down here, Senator Terenzini, Senator Chittenden. Okay, uh, so compile that data. Okay, Jim, how does that feel to you? That's fine, yep. Okay, and then I think we also, that kind of eliminates Jim's concern about how, you know, that, that expense in terms of analyzing, would it be um, they're just compiling it and they're giving recommendations. So that's, uh, that is a change as well as Senator Lyon's suggestion, um, referencing the report on, uh, youth risk behavior. Um, what do we want to do with, uh, you know, and that also to me, it, it, makes me feel more comfortable separating this, the agency from the task force. In other words, getting rid of the word in conjunction. Again, uh, we'll, let the, we'll let the task force do their work. So uh, Jim, I think um, the task force will make recommendations to end suspensions and expulsions. Um, it doesn't need to be in conjunction with the agency. They will have the agency's report, support as outlined in this bill, but I think it does create a conflict if the agency disagrees with the with the direction or some of the recommendations. This is an independence group. They have the agency's support. Um, they're only meeting six times. The compiling data and making recommendations, um, re- removing the analysis piece. We as the legislature can direct the agency or the agency may do analysis on this. Um, can I ask this question? Yeah. I, I'm, I've lost touch with which task force we talked about yesterday uh, and who's being elected chair here, how the chair is chosen. And then we don't need terms with this, but certainly we don't want the secretary of education being the chair of the task force. But so is there anything in here about the organization? Yes, uh, there is. Um, okay. So on page... Yeah. Seven. Let's go there. Okay, because I don't have, I haven't put it up on my iPad. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah it's right here. So let me just okay. pull, pull up. So it, it basically, um, so the Secretary of Education will call the first meeting 
Yeah. Um, and it says the task force shall select a chair from a men its members. Okay. And then it goes on to talk about quorum requirements okay. um, and the number of times it meets. And then that's, then we get into the assistance, but it'll have the administrative, technical and legal assistance from the agency of education. Perfect. Yeah, and I think it's your rights in our lines. Yesterday we talked, uh, as we'll see when we look at literacy, we made the yeah. the new director of, right. uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Jim, do you have enough uh, to go on for, uh, to get us uh, another draft? I do. Um, let's just finish up with the bill. Um, yeah, please. I'm not sure that we've gone through the whole thing. So we've certainly gone through this a lot. Um, yeah, because we've been there. So let's see if we've made any changes. Uh, okay. Okay, um, this is a change from the last draft, uh, clarifying that a school uh, may expel uh, the student is to impose the threat of harm or danger to the school, to others in the school. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then um, that was it. Yep. So I can update that draft. Okay. Uh, Jim, just in terms of us trying to possibly move things along today, if we were to take a, a break, is that possible for you to work on that and then come back? And then we'll do this again and then move on. Oh, to of course. Break? Does that work? Sure, of course, yeah. Okay, yeah. great. So committee, why don't we then uh, break? Um, it gives people an opportunity to review things. Um, and Jim, will come back at 2.30 and, uh, and look at, if it works for you, Jim, uh, yep. a clean draft and see uh, what the committee's feeling is at that point. Chair Kevin? Yeah, please. Uh, 2.30 is the Tim Ash event I was planning to attend. Oh. Right, right. Yes. Good reminder. What if we uh, keep working, keep working for 15 minutes and, or 10 minutes and we'll set this aside and we'll move on to literacy and kind of make our way through that. And then we'll do the uh, Tim Ash event. Senator Terenzini, you weren't here yesterday. There is an event for the former pro tem, um, they're uh, a painting, uh, I hope uh, he's not watching. I hope he's not watching as well. Uh, <laughs> and um, anyhow, that event is going to go from 2.30 until about uh, 2.50. So feel free to either stretch or attend or both. Um, okay, so that feels to me, and I may be the only one that loves this kind of stage of the work, but it does feel better. It really feels tighter and better. And uh, certainly as we go through this, it makes me more comfortable um, as we raise the questions uh, because we'll get the answers now and fix things before uh, we another committee or we get asked questions on the floor. So with that, um, Jim, uh, okay. if you want to bring us through uh, literacy. And this okay. is draft, uh, I have 6.1. Yes, um, I've got 6.12. Um, just trying to make sure I get the right document to open. We five. Yeah, this one. And please uh, yeah. go ahead and begin. Senator Hooker, you have the floor. I'm just going to use the washroom, uh, or you have the you have the power. Go ahead, Jim. Okay. All right. So for the record, uh, Jim Damore, the Council, we're walking to draft 6.1 of your literacy bill. Um, so I'll just go through changes. Okay. Uh, actually, Jim, uh, before I walk all the way down the hall to the washroom, um, would you be so kind as to bring every, just bring us through the whole bill? I, you know, Senator Terenzini, uh, it's not only because of Senator Turnzini, but I think just an overall review before we um, move forward with it, sure. I think is just helpful. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we're starting with findings. 
and you're talking about um, the implementation of Act 173, which is reforming special education, um, and the DMG report, and some of those findings about their outcomes. So you're talking about these three areas here. I won't read them, but... Um, and then it goes on to talk about the data, um, indicate that we need to improve our literacy outcomes. So you have some examples of that. And then we go into COVID, um, saying it's getting worse because of COVID-19. Um, then we go on to the purpose, um, which is to continue the ongoing work to improve the literacy of all students in the state while recognizing that achieving this goal will require a multi-year and multi-dimensional effort requiring uh, continued focus by the General Assembly Administration and school uh, leaders. Then we have the uh, grant funding. So we have a $3 million uh, appropriation. Um, again, we have a, a, a bracket here because we're not sure where it's coming from. So we'll have to come back to that. Um, and that will be uh, used to um, have the agency provide grants to SUs and school dist supervisory districts uh, on behalf of their member school districts uh, to provide professional development for teachers and methods of teaching literacy. Um, agency will administer the grant program, uh, determine which SDs and SUs are eligible uh, based on its assessment of relative need, taking into account the following factors across applicants. Uh, literacy assessments of students, the number of literacy, literary instructors per enrolled students, the percentage of students eligible for free, free or reduced price meals, the percentage of students who are English language learners, that's new, came from Chelsea, um, and five discrepancies in outcome data on literacy for students from historically underserved populations, including to the extent that, that the data is available. In compliance with privacy laws, students who are Black, Indigenous, people of color, and students on uh, IEPs. And six, the extent to which uh, teacher professional development is integrated with a multi-tiered system of supports. So those are the criteria upon which the Secretary will grant funding. Then we have a staffing session section saying that the following position is created. One full-time director level classified position to serve as statewide literacy coordinator in the offices of the secretary. New language, the person hired as the statewide literacy coordinator shall hold a master's level degree or have equivalent expertise based on work experience in the field of evidence-based literacy instruction. And the appropriation for that is $150,000. Section five um, amends existing statute uh, uh, 2903, which uh, is a statute dealing with uh, preventing uh, failure, but it was focusing on, on reading and you're focusing on literacy. So this amends that section to give it the framework that you're now using. So essentially what we're doing here is just replacing the word reading with literacy. Um, so I won't go through all this, um, but we're updating this statute to, to conform with your framework around uh, literacy. So Jim, um, if I could just interrupt there for a moment. Uh, last night when I was looking at this, so this is, we are just updating um, the statute here, correct? Getting, you know, eliminating reading, uh, making some other technical changes, um, and I guess a few policy changes. Well, no, not, not too much. And this recommendation came from whom? This section, do you remember? From me. <laughs> from <laughs> me, because when, when Secretary French mentioned this section, I was, I was unaware of it. And when I read it, I realized that it's not fitting in, into the framework you're using. Got it. I also, also it has the vision, the, or the, the plan, the vision is here. Um, where is it? Um, yeah, state board will develop a plan. Yep. So we have a lot of language in, in this bill around this plan. Yep. Uh, so um, updating it to make sure that it fits in with what you want to do here. Great, that's very helpful. Yep. 
Senator Hooker. Senator Campion, I don't know. I think you received an email last night, as I did, uh, from Mr. Hobson, perhaps, and talking about when this statute was last updated, because I don't know if I spoke in, um, in error, but I thought I heard the uh, secretary saying that it hadn't been updated since 2009. And uh, I was told that um, I believe it's the uh, school board association had looked at it and worked on it in 2019. So I just want to clarify, you know, get a, a clear reading on when that statute was updated. And I think I so this was in, oh, go ahead, Jim. Sorry, I think there's two things happening here. One is when the statute was last updated, but Secretary French, I think, was talking about when the plan uh, that's required by the statute was last updated. Okay. Um, yeah. So I think he said the plan hasn't been updated since 2009. The statute, uh, I have it in front of me, I can tell you, um, it was last amended in 2009. Yeah, I think it's the... Um... I'm not sure, but I just wanted to make sure that I hadn't misspoken. So I, I think I was correct in saying that the secretary had cited 2009. And this was in regard to um, the fact that we had a plan in place where we were going to put a plan in place, ask for one to be um, created in this bill that we're, we're proposing. And the secretary had said that there was already a literacy plan. And I think that's how we got to this point. Correct. We had, we that had, sounds, a, that sounds a, accurate. we are, a, we, you have a requirement for a vision to be developed. Yeah. And he said, well, there's already a, a plan, which is basically a okay. vision. Yeah. yeah. But it hasn't been maintained. Yeah. Okay. So I, I don't know if we want to take a look at, um, the plan that was looked at in 2019. I, not that it, I, I don't know what effect it would have on this bill, but I'll look at it. Okay, uh, maybe, yeah, I'm a little bit unclear in terms of um, that, but let's let's continue and then we can, we can also have a conversation. <clears throat> Wherever that plan is, this is going to be required to be updated. Um, so, this bill. Um, okay, so I, I missed a couple in the last iteration. I missed a couple of these changes from reading through the so I picked those up now. Um, and yeah, then we use this definition of evidence based literacy and instruction. Uh, this came over from Chelsea. So, we we're using this definition um, for this purpose. And then we have a new section 2903A, which is your new advisory council on literacy. This is your permanent council. Um, purpose is to uh, advise the agency of education, the board, state board, and you on how to improve uh, proficiency outcomes um, uh, for all students in pre-K through grade 12 and how to sustain those outcomes. Membership is 18 members. Uh, eight members, this is a new language, who shall serve as ex officio members. And they're here. So we have, uh, review it. We, we have the statewide literacy coordinator, the new one being hired. We have a member of the Serenus board. We have uh, the V's um, right through here. And then we have 10 members who will serve, I said two year terms, but you could do three or whatever you want to do. Um, um, so you have a rep appointed by the Vermont Curriculum Leaders Association, four teachers appointed by the Vermont NEA, uh, who teach literacy, one of whom should be a special ed uh, literacy teacher, and two, at least two of whom shall teach literacy to students in pre-K through grade three. You have two family members, guardians, um, or education surrogates of students who struggle or have struggled with literacy proficiency appointed by the Vermont Family Network. And you have two high school students or recent high school graduates who struggle or have struggled with literacy proficiency appointed by AOE. And lastly, you have one member appointed by the Vermont Legal Aid Disability Law Project. C is new language. So the members 
which who have two year terms. Um, so remember with a term limit, so serve for a term of two years until a successor is appointed. Uh, a term shall begin on January 1st of the year of appointment or to uh, December 31 of the last year of the term. Terms of these members shall be staggered so that not all terms expire at the same time. A vacancy created before the expiration of a term should be filled in the same manner as the original appointment. And the member with the term limit shall not serve more than two consecutive terms. A member appointed for vacancy created before the expiration of a term shall not be deemed to have served a term for the purpose of the subdivision. This language came from um, uh, Imran, um, and it's used in the for the uh, State Ethics Commission. Okay. And this might, this, uh, later in the bill, we'll go through. I think I we say, might, later in the bill, we'll come to a transitional. Pro yeah, we're, I think we're going to pause there, Jim. Uh, I think it's a pretty good okay. spot. So when we return, we'll pick up with powers and duties. Yep. Yep. Powers and duties. Um, so we'll come back, let's say at five minutes to three, because it might run a little long. Uh, so let's say 255. And Jim, if you don't mind staying on, I'm going to be a little late to the, to the party. Um, and you and I can chat for a minute. 